In this video, I'll show you three ways to use the Merge Shapes feature in Storyline 360. Here at Yukon Learning, we're all about making e-learning easy for everyone, and you can check us out at yukonlearning.com. I'll start in this scene with just a blank slide, and let's look at the basics of merging shapes here in Storyline. The first thing I'll do is just insert a couple of shapes onto the screen, maybe a rectangle and a circle, and I'll make them different colors. So if I make that circle red, let's have these overlap a little bit. You may be familiar with the concept of merging shapes in PowerPoint, and in PowerPoint, the order in which you select the shapes really determines how they're going to merge. The way that it works in Storyline, because we have the timeline, is whichever item is on top of the timeline above the other one, the items that you're merging, is going to determine how those items will merge. So here's what I mean by that. Because right now, the red circle is on top of the blue rectangle, when I select these two items and come up to Merge Shapes underneath the Format tab, how they union, exclude, fragment, intersect, and subtract is going to be determined by that red circle that is currently on top. If I move the blue rectangle to the front and did the exact same thing, select them both, again, order in which I'm selecting them does not matter, come back to the Format tab and merge those shapes, my union, exclude, fragment, intersect, and subtract is different because now the blue rectangle is on top. So being armed with that knowledge is important because you may need to move your items on the timeline or on your slide to make sure that items are merging the way you want them to. So let's look at a couple of examples. In this first example, I'm gonna use the merge shapes to get my picture to be a perfect circle. So I've inserted an image onto the screen and I've also inserted a circle shape. And in my format, I can see this shape is a perfect circle. It is 800 pixels wide by 800 pixels tall. And what I wanna do is just place this circle on top of the portion of the image that I want. And as I'm moving it, that circle is a, is a bit transparent. And I do want to make sure that it stays inside the boundaries of the rectangular image. So I don't want it way down here. Or when I go to merge these things, that bottom portion may be cut off. So I do want to make sure I'm staying within the confines of the image. But maybe this is the portion that I want right here. I want just the two women on the screen smiling. And the oval or the circle is actually behind that photo. So I can't see it anymore once I've dropped it on the image where I want it to go. I'm gonna select both of those items and merge these shapes. Even though my picture is an image, not a shape that I've inserted, I can still merge it with another object in Storyline. When I select Merge Shapes, I can choose the Intersect option and I now have that perfect circle of just the portion of the image that I want. In my second example here, I'm gonna merge a picture with a text box. So let's look at what we have on the screen right now. I've got a picture of the Seattle skyline. Again, this is just a content library image that I pulled in. And I'll hide that and then show that I also have a text box. So text box with a really big font on it, 375 point font. I'm gonna move that to the back. So it is now behind that image. And when I select both of them, come up to my drawing tools format and merge those shapes, I'll start scrolling through these slowly so you can see what's gonna happen depending on what I choose. Union doesn't look like it does a lot, exclude, cuts the Seattle out of the picture. So that might work well if that's what I was looking to do and retain most of the image. Fragmenting them is going to cut out each individual letter from my text box. I can intersect and that's what I was looking for here because I wanted the space needle right in that T if it wasn't showing up exactly where I wanted it to go, I'd come out of this merge shapes and I would bring my Seattle text box back up to the front of the slide, make sure I was moving that around so that I was uh, getting it right where I wanted on the screen with the space needle right in the middle of it, then move it back to the back. Mine's pretty good, so I'll select both, come back to that merge shapes, intersect, 
and now I only have that portion of the image that is in the text box. So this is now a picture. I can't come in here and change the letters to say something else. By merging those two shapes, I've created a new image and I can move that up onto my slide wherever I want it to go. One more method here, similar to the previous example, but it's going to give me a little bit more flexibility with my uh, letters that I have on the screen. I'm actually going to merge my text with a shape and then use that over the image of the water that you see on the screen here. So what's on my timeline? I have a picture of some water. I'll hide that and show you. I have a text box that says water safety and I have a rectangle that I've used to cover the entire screen here. So I'm going to merge the rectangle with my water safety text. Where the water safety text is placed on the screen really doesn't matter in this example because I'm not merging it with the photo. I'm just merging it with this teal or turquoise rectangle that I currently have on the screen that's at the front of the timeline. So if I take that item, the rectangle and my text box, come up to my drawing tools format and look through these merge shapes option. Union doesn't look like it does a lot. Exclude, however, gives me this water safety, almost like cutout on my screen here. Fragment is going to again, cut out each individual letter and intersect is just basically going to make those letters turquoise and subtract doesn't look like it does a lot here. What I'm looking to do is exclude. And once I've excluded water safety from that rectangle, if I bring that picture back onto the screen, that water safety is now on top of my image in the background and I can move it around. I could uh, adjust the transparency or the shape fill of my rectangle. Maybe I wanna make this a completely different color, but that cutout of my letters is going to stay there. Now again, this is a merged shape, so there's nothing that I can click into and edit as far as text goes here, but I could move this around and make it smaller if I wanted to, or have it cover up the entire screen and maybe have some transparency to it rather than being 0% transparent. Maybe I want this 15% transparent, but that water safety title is cut out and I can see a little bit of that water image behind. So that's three different ways that you can use the new Merge Shapes feature in Storyline. I hope that you feel inspired to try your own methods. And if we can be of assistance to you, please don't hesitate to visit us at yukonlearning.com.